as Phil mentioned, we did a meeting uh, last Saturday in Barrie. We had a great turnout. Uh, we did a meeting on Monday night up in St. Albans, snowing. We had a great turnout. But nothing like the turnout here tonight. Wow! This is going to It's incredible. And I thank you, you know, I thank you very much for coming out. And I'm going to get into the thrust of what I want to say in a minute. But why meetings like this are important is this is part of what old-fashioned democracy is supposed to be about. Uh, your job is to do your best to follow what's going on. My job is to listen to what you have to say and take that message back to Washington. And I think all over this country, you know, what democracy is largely about is ugly 30-second ads on TV. And I think what this is about is what real democracy uh, is supposed to be about. People coming together to have a civil discussion uh, about the important issues facing our country. My concerns and the reason I'm holding these meetings are, are several fold. Number one, sometimes when you turn on the TV or you pick up the newspaper, you'll hear some economist or some politician or some pundit telling you that the recession is over and we're on the way to recovery. Yeah. Technically, technically, for PhDs in economics, that is probably correct because we've had economic growth for a number of quarters. In reality, in terms of what is happening to ordinary Americans, anybody who thinks that the recession is over is a total idiot. <laughs> and let me just bore you for a moment to go over some facts uh, that you don't hear often. I think many of you know I am the longest serving independent in congressional history. And one of the things, one of the things that I try to do is to raise issues in this state that other people are not talking about. So let me just talk about a couple of things. First of all, when you turn on TV, they're going to tell you that unemployment nationally is about 8.9%. That is very high. But you know what? Real unemployment is a lot higher than that. Because when they come up with official statistics, they forget a couple of things. Number one, they forget to include people who have given up looking for work, called discouraged workers. High unemployment areas, they ask somebody, are you looking for work? I said, oh, no, no jobs around there. I'm not looking for work. Second of all, they do not include people who are working 20 hours a week or 10 hours a week when they want to be working full time. If you add those two other statistics together, you know what the unemployment rate in America today is? It is 16%. Phenomenally high. So that's issue number one. The only way we put pressure on Washington to say that we need to create millions and millions of good paying jobs is when people stand up as we are doing tonight and say, excuse us, this economy is not doing well. You got a lot more work to do in Washington. <laughs> Last 10 years, we have given hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to the top 2%. And just a few months ago, in December, Against my strong opposition, I spent eight hours on the floor opposing it. The President and the Republicans agree that despite the enormous income inequality in America today, despite the huge deficit that we have, they thought it was a good idea to give hundreds of billions of dollars more in tax breaks to the top 2%. So you have tax breaks for the rich, you got a war, and then all of you will remember three years ago when the crooks on Wall Street, through their greed and their recklessness and their illegal behavior, brought the world's financial system to the edge of collapse where was the Congress? Congress said, we have got to bail them out. Welfare for billionaires. So you add all of that together, you got a huge deficit. Now, it seems to me 
that at a time when the wealthiest people in this country have never had it so good, when the effective real tax rate for the very richest people is lower than it has ever been on record, when we have given them hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks, it seems to me to be not only immoral, but bad economics to simply balance the budget on the backs of the children, the elderly, the sick, and the poor. That is wrong, and we must not allow that to happen. It seems to me we need a little shared sacrifice. And that is why I have introduced legislation which would impose a surtax of 5.4% on income above a million dollars. That would bring in about $50 billion. You do a few other things you can negotiate.